Now, I know what y'all think is in my cup. It is not alcohol, I promise you. It's lemonade. Might be a little too early for a drink. You know I wish there was some beer or some whiskey in that cup. But I think it's just a little too early, you know what I'm saying? Uh, maybe later on tonight, I'll do another video and I'll have a drink with y'all, you know what I'm saying? But hey, nah, that's just lemonade. Hello? Hello, addiction. Hey, yo, what's good with it? Do you like scary movies? Hell yeah, I love scary movies, man. You know what I'm saying? That's the shit, bro. Hey, I'm telling you, bro. You should definitely check out my channel, bro. We talk horror, comedy, all kinds of shit, bro. I love it. Who is this? The question isn't, who am I? The question is, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing a review for Scream from 1996. This movie changed my life, man. I'm telling you, bro. I seen it when I was like six years old. And this shit was crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hello? Hello? <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Addiction TV. I hope everybody is having a good morning so far. Hey, it's been a while, y'all. I ain't posted a video in a while, man. Except for a couple days ago, I posted this, uh, this song that I recently put out. It's called uh, Don't Need You, and I want to thank all y'all, everyone on YouTube, everybody on Facebook, I want to thank y'all for the love that song's been getting, that is what's up. In today's video, we are going to be doing a review for one of my all-time favorite slasher films, Scream, from 1996. This movie changed my life, you know what I'm saying? Like, not to sound dramatic, but that movie really changed the way I looked at cinema, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we're going to go ahead and review all four of the Scream movies. I'm going to put two reviews out today and then two reviews out tomorrow. Then Thursday I will be going to see Scream 2022 and then I will review that. And before we get into the video, if you haven't already, go down, grab the like button, hit the subscribe button. That would be awesome. So when it comes to Scream, I will never forget 1996. Okay. Um, my mom decided to rent it from the video store. Maybe it was 97. I can't remember. I know it came out in 96. I don't remember where it, when it came out on VHS. But it was still brand new. And my mom decided to rent it. Okay? I'm in first grade, I think. So, my mom decides to rent Scream. I had no clue what it was. Never heard of it. Um, so, she's like, do you want to watch this movie with me? I'm like, yeah, I'll watch it with you. So we sit down, and within the first five minutes, my little mind, I was freaking out, bro. The voice of the killer had me. The opening is so intense, man. And Drew Barrymore, she kills it. But I just remember, like, when, when Ghostface kills Casey and Steve, I remember my mom covering my eyes and stuff. And it's like, hey, I'm still watching the movie. I know what's going on. People are getting chopped up people are getting messed up you know what i mean so uh yeah i was terrified after me and mom watched scream so what messed me up even more is later that night we go to bed i was scared to sleep alone so i slept in my mom's bed with her that night okay i find a knife under my mom's bed and i'm like you gonna kill me ain't you no well obviously my mom wasn't gonna kill me my mom had the knife under the bed because she had watched scream the night before me and her did and she couldn't get through it she started it and she turned it off and she went to bed with a knife under it but anyways we opened up with casey becker making some popcorn you know what i'm saying she's getting ready to watch a video phone rings mysterious voice you know hello who is this who, who are you trying to reach? What number is this? You know, and we got the killer on the phone kind of flirting with Drew Barrymore. And she's kind of flirting back. You know, she tells the killer she doesn't have a boyfriend. And the killer's like, you know, maybe he'll ask her out on a date. And, uh, you know, things get intense. You know, he keeps saying, you never told me your name. And she's all like, why do you want to know my name? And he's like, because I want to know who I'm looking at. And, man, I'm telling you, this shit was intense for me. And I still love this movie to this day. I love watching it with other people who have never seen it and watching their reactions during the opening scene. And, uh, 
oh man, the first 10 minutes of Scream, it's just like, oh my goodness, man. The way Ghostface is taunting Casey, and after, you, you know, the callbacks to all the classic horror films like Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween, I just thought it was like brilliant the way Ghostface, he's like, want to play a game. Name the killer in Halloween, you know, she's like Michael Myers. Name the killer in Friday the 13th. She's all, Jason, Jason, I'm sorry, that's the wrong answer. Hey, I thought that was brilliant, because there's a lot of people who've seen Friday the 13th movies, but they have never seen the first one, and they don't know that Mrs. Voorhees was the killer. And I will never forget when Steve was tied up in the chair, taped to the chair outside the door, and Casey's looking at him. Um, I used to have the NC-17 cut of the film on VHS, and I'll never forget seeing his intestines falling out after Ghostface gutted him. I was like, I've never seen nothing like this before. And you know, I, like I said, y'all heard me say a hundred times, I was scared, but I was enjoying it so much. Like I was, I was terrified and it felt good. It was like an adrenaline rush. So Ghostface finally gets in the house. You know, Casey grabs a knife to protect herself. She goes outside. She goes in the backyard or the side yard. Uh, Ghostface finally catches up with her, man. And I ain't gonna lie, the scene is sad. The scene's kind of sad, you know. He catches up to her, stabs her right here in the chest. And uh, her parents are coming home as well. And this scene was just so gut-wrenching. It was intense. It was sad. Um... And Casey's parents, she's still got the phone in her hand. And Casey's parents can hear her dying over the phone. And I do like this callback to uh, the original Halloween. When uh, Casey's dad says, call the police, drive down to the McKenzie's, call the police. Hey, great callback. You know what I'm saying? Kevin Williamson, shout out to you, man. Um, and Casey's parents go out the front door and they find her hanging from a tree gutted and I'm just like oh man bro the opening to this movie my mind was blown so now we catch up with our main character of the movie Sidney Prescott played by Nev Campbell and I want to go ahead and say the cast for this movie legendary cast you know what I'm saying everybody came with their A game even if they were fresh faces they came with their A game and you know we did have Courtney Cox, who was on Friends for a while. Uh, David Arquette, he was an experienced actor a little bit. He hadn't, he hadn't done too much. But, you know, we got Matthew Lillard, Skeet Ulrich, Jamie Kennedy, Rose McGowan. This cast was freaking dope. I'm telling you, man. And then uh, we'll get back to the story in a minute. But, you know, I just like little things that relate to old horror, like a news reporter played by Linda Blair from The Exorcist. You know, that's... That's just dope, man. This movie has so much love for the genre. The writer, Kevin Williamson, you know, so much love for the genre. Wes Craven directing, you already know. He killed it. He fucking killed it. So we're introduced to Sidney Prescott and Billy Loomis. Shall I uh, call back to Dr. Loomis from Halloween? Billy Loomis and uh, Sidney Prescott, okay. He's a horny teenager, you know. He wants to take Sid's virginity. He wants to get laid. You know what I'm saying? And she's not ready. I mean, uh, a year prior to these events, Sydney's mother was found raped and murdered. And uh, that has a lot to do with where the movie is going. And, you know, Sydney claims it was a man by the name of Cotton Weary, you know. So Cotton goes to prison. So we catch up with all the characters at high school. And they're all being interrogated by the police. Jamie Kennedy's over there. Did you really put her liver in the mailbox? And Stu, leave her alone. Okay. So at this point in time, you're trying to guess who the killer is. And you got your suspicions. You know what I'm saying? And I, I really liked getting to know these characters, man. Like, I, I love this movie so much, and I hold this movie so close to my heart. So, uh, Sydney's father is going out of town on a business trip. And she's supposed to go stay with her friend Tatum. So Sydney is at home. She's getting ready to, uh, you know, she's getting ready, getting her stuff ready to go spend the night with Tatum, and she falls asleep on the couch. Tatum calls her, and they get off the phone, you know, and then Ghostface calls, and Sydney thinks it's Randy. And what's really funny about that scene is 
he, the ghost face is like, do you like scary movies? And she's like, you know I don't watch that shit. It's all about some big-breasted girl who can't act who's running up the steps when she be going out the front door. It's insulting. And when finally, when Ghostface finally attacks, she tries to go out the front door, but she runs up the steps, and I just, I thought that was hilarious. So now we got Ghostface trying to get in her room, and Sydney, you know, she types on the computer calling 911. Ghostface disappears, and then Billy ends up popping up through the window, and... That's sus as hell. Suspicious as hell. He drops the cell phone. Sydney's freaking out. And she goes down the steps. She runs down the steps to around with the front door. Opens the door and there's the ghost face face. The ghost face mask right there in her face. And it's Dewey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's Dewey. Talking about, I found this. And I love how they kind of point in every character's direction to where they could be the killer. They're all suspects. Everybody's a suspect. So Billy's arrested. And then we got Principal Hembry, played by Henry Winkler. Gotta love Henry Winkler. The Fonz, I love that motherfucker. He's funny as hell. Every time I see him in something, he's cracking me up. But, uh, so Billy's arrested, and we meet Principal Hembry, and some time's gone by. We got all the this drama between Gail and Sydney going on because the book that Gail Weathers wrote, and... There hasn't been any killing in a while, so now we got Henry Winkler's character, Principal Hembry. Ghostface comes in, murders him in his principal's office, you know. I remember seeing like a behind the scenes thing where they're like, where it wasn't in the script, and they're like, no one's been killed in a while, we gotta add something. But it's funny when uh, Principal Hembry opens the door and he's like, damn little shits, and the janitor's out there cleaning the hallway, and it's Wes Craven in a Freddy Krueger sweater and hat. And he's like, what'd you call me? And I'm like, ha ha, classic. And Principal Hembry's like, not you, Fred. So, you were getting close to the climax of the movie. There's some things I skipped out on, but we're not gonna give too many spoilers. And before I reveal the killers, in every review, I will go ahead and say, spoiler alert. But, okay, they're throwing a party. Most horror films, at least slasher films, someone ends up at a party you know what I'm saying? And uh, they're watching Halloween, and we get to the classic part where Randy is giving all the rules on how to survive a horror film, and I love it. Number one, you can never have sex. Number two, never drink or do drugs. Number three, never say I'll be right back because you won't be back. And Stu just cracks me up, and he's like, "Get another beer. You want one? I'll be right back." And I'm like, "Ha ha, classic. I love it, man." But anyways, Billy shows up to the party, and uh, he ends up taking Sydney's virginity, okay? So, we get one of my favorite death scenes in this movie with Rose McGowan's character, Tatum, who <laughs> tries to crawl through a doggy door, or a cat door, whatever, on the garage, and... <laughs> She gets stuck, Ghostface turns on the garage, and it just crushes her. I'm like, damn, you know, being a little kid. I mean, I, I don't know, man. That There's just something about that kill that's so creative. I mean, I don't think that door would lift a human being, but it was still creative and pretty damn cool. So, Billy and Sydney, they have sex. More people are dying, more people are getting attacked. The party's starting to clear out because of the curfew. And Ghostface comes in after Sydney and Billy have sex and kills Billy. Okay, so Ghostface is chasing Sydney all throughout the house. Uh, he comes in and he kills Dewey. And so now we got Randy and Stu blaming each other, telling Sydney, He did it. No, Sydney, it was him. I promise. And you know. Sydney's like, fuck both of you, and she goes in the house, locks the door. Here comes Billy, tumbling down the stairs like, I knew something was going on here. So Billy finally manages to uh, fall down. He manages to fall down the steps. He gets up, and by the way, Sydney has Dewey's gun at this point. And Billy gets the gun from Sydney, and uh, he lets Randy in. And Randy's like, Stu's flipped out. He's gone mad. And I just love it. Billy's like, 
we all go a little mad sometimes. And shoots Randy, and it's like, oh, shit. And, you know, Billy, I love it. All the callbacks to horror. <laughs> Anthony Perkins, psycho. And, you know, he's like, hmm, corn syrup. Same thing they use for pig's blood and carry. Like, dude, this movie is so fucking awesome. So then Stu comes in, pulls out the little voice changer that they use when they call their victims, and he's, hello, Sydney, or surprise, Sydney. And I'm like, oh, shit, it was them two all along. Stu always seemed like he could be a killer. He's a little off the rails in a goofy way, but still could be a killer. And it's revealed that the reason Billy is after Sydney, it turns out they killed, uh, Stu and Billy killed Sydney's mom. And they framed Cotton Weary. And the reason they, Billy wanted to kill Sydney's mother is because she had been sleeping with Billy's dad. She's the reason Billy's mom left and wasn't coming back. So Billy blames the Prescott family. And now at this point they pull Sydney's dad out of a closet. He's taped up. He's tied up. They're going to frame him for the murders. Which leads to one of the best scenes in the movie of Billy and Stu stabbing the shit out of each other. <laughs> I remember being a little disturbed as a kid, but I remember laughing as well. I was like, this is sick, but it's funny as hell. So, and Matthew Lillard just shines in this scene. I love it, man. You know, he's getting stabbed multiple times. He's like, you cut me too deep. <laughs> and I feel a little woozy here. I love that shit, man. And uh, then Gail Weathers comes in and, you know, she's trying to shoot. Billy and Stu and the safety's on and they knock Gail out and then Sydney has time to go put on the ghost face costume. She hides, she calls Billy and Stu and it's funny because Stu or Billy's getting into it on the phone with Sydney. They're fucking arguing and he throws the phone and it hits Stu right in the back of the head and he's like, you fucking hit me with the phone, you dick. And I'm like, ha, 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 I love this. And Stu picks up the phone. He's like, do you really call the police? She's like, you bet your ass. And he's like, my mom and dad are going to be so mad at me. Like, dude, that shit. It was hilarious. But anyways, um, long story short, Sydney gets the upper hand, stabs Billy with a, an umbrella. Stu comes in, attacks Sydney. She drops a TV on his head. Uh, Gail comes to and shoots Billy. Randy's still alive. They finally shoot Billy in the head and... You know, there we are. Survivors are Gail, Sydney, Randy, and Dewey. And then, you know, one year goes by until Scream 2, which will be the next review in leading up to Scream 2022. I might drink a beer with y'all for the Scream 2 review. I'm not sure yet. I'm definitely going to have to have a drink for Scream 3. If I had to, if I was doing like a rating, out of five stars for the first Scream, I'd go ahead and give it five. It's what made me a fan of the slasher genre, horror movies in general, um, and then and it's what led me to see Halloween. And once I saw Halloween, I fell in love. I was like, yes, this is awesome. And dude, ever since then, Scream and Halloween are my two, my two go-tos, man. But y'all already know that. I talk about them on my channel all the time. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That is my review for Scream from 1996. Later today, I will be giving you Scream 2. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, guys, coming at you from Addiction TV.